Coming up straight ahead, uh, taking stock of the housing crisis, ways to keep more people in their homes, steps that uh, banks should take now to keep the crisis from worsening. We'll get the details. This week brought renewed worries over the outlook for recovery in the housing industry as residential construction and mortgage applications, they both showed declines. A pressing concern, how to keep delinquent borrowers from losing their homes and what banks can do to improve the situation. Dan Alpert is the managing director of Westwood Capital and Jason Barrett is a managing director of Paladin Strategic Partners. Gentlemen, welcome to the program. Good to um, meet you. Uh, Jason, let me begin by, uh, by putting it to you, this new program to keep people in their homes even though they can't afford to pay the mortgages, is this something that is really going to solve the housing problem? Well, we, first of all, we think that this is a, it's a public problem, and we're taking a leadership role as our firm by putting together a private program that will buy discounted mortgages at, at, at obviously, you know, lower than par, and effectively forgiving principal, or modifying interest rates, and keeping people in their homes. The housing crisis has adversely impacted many people, and we firmly believe that you have to take a leadership role by, by trying to keep people in their homes. All right. Well, Daniel, uh, tell me, how does this benefit investors, though? This is about allocating capital. Why not let the government do this? Well, the government obviously isn't doing it. The government programs, HAMP and all the others, uh, have fallen short of doing what's necessary in order to keep not only people in their homes, but also keep foreclosed homes off the market. Uh, we're looking right now at 3.4 million homes uh, that are in foreclosure. We're talking about 14-plus uh, percent of loans being either delinquent or in foreclosure. That's 60 days delinquent. And next year, we're going to see uh, total foreclosures uh, balloon to an enormous number that not only is historically unprecedented, but is going to deliver to the market as many homes as are currently on the market today. 14 million homes, we believe, will be on the market next year. That's double what's typically on the market in, in, in uh, under current normal economics. All right, so the idea being that this is not only going to help really the people who are delinquent or can't afford to stay in their homes, this helps the whole housing market because if your home is next door to somebody that can't pay the value of your home, probably is going to end up declining. Right now, the way we're going, we're going to see another leg down in residential housing. I think that's what's spooking the market this week. Uh, we're looking at uh, uh, additional pressure because rents are continuing to fall. Uh, and uh, that started only about two or three months ago. You started to see real reductions in rents, inflation-adjusted rents. Uh, and that is going to, to, to create the pressure. The only way to relieve that pressure is to keep people in their houses. And you can make money doing that. How do you make money doing that, Jason? Well, the key thing is buying the, you know, buying that, you know, the loans at the right price. So someone's got to take a hit. Someone's got to take a hit. But if you think about it, we're really taking a Chapter 7 liquidation approach. We're buying the house for the bricks and mortar. The house, the borrowers that we're, the, the loans that we're buying, there's no principal and interest. So what we're doing now, we're creative, creating an incentive program where our interests are aligned with the borrowers to reduce the, 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 the principal, to reduce the interest rate, to now create principal and interest. As a result, now you've created a loan where there's principal and interest. You've kept a, a homeowner in their home, and I think that's tantamount to, to, the, to the American spirit. And also what you can then do is you can exit at a multiple because you've now created cash flow. But how do you convince those who hold the paper, who hold the loan, in order to go along with you in this? I mean, did they benefit in any of the upside when eventually, supposedly, the economy turns around and these people can pay? Well, you know, it's a function of how you structure. You can structure uh, an asset purchase. And I don't want to give away the secret sauce, but you can structure an asset purchase where there is an up, uh, you know, provided that you meet a minimum return for you. Because obviously we're in the business of obviously keeping people in their homes, but, you know, this is a, this is a for-profit business. So you can structure something wh where you have mutually beneficial uh, uh, goals with respect to the bank selling you the loan and respect to us as investors making prudent investments. Uh, Daniel, what happens when interest rates start to move? We talk a lot about option arms and the resets. I think, what are we talking about, a billion yeah, resetting least, this thanks. year, right? Uh, so, 2010. Right. So what happens when interest rates start to rise, let's say, 12 months from now, and let's say the economy has not turned around at least enough to get all these people back into paying 
and amortizing the loan at present what value. What, of course, you're describing right now is why interest rates can't rise. Uh, that, of course, is the same across a whole bunch of asset classes. Interest rate can't rise because you'll set off another uh, series of, of asset devaluation. Um, when interest rates do eventually rise, and of course they must, they can't stay at zero forever, uh, you're going to see a rationalization in housing prices. Right now, look at it this way. We've seen about a 75% of decline towards the point we think we will eventually get to. The reason that we're hovering above that point is because of federal government tax credits, is because of low interest rates. When those things are removed, you're going to see an additional decline. And quite frankly, I believe that we've exhausted a lot of the pent-up demand. So you're going to start seeing that decline pretty much no matter what you do. Uh, right now, the, what, what's key is to avoid another round of foreclosures. All right, we're going to talk about that. We're going to talk about another round of foreclosures. Also, the number of troubled banks has jumped this year. The FDIC seizing more than 120 of them. We're going to take a closer look at the banking industry and the implications for residential housing for the banks. This is Taking Stock on Bloomberg. This is Taking Stock on Bloomberg. I'm Pim Fox. My guests are Daniel Alpert, Managing Director of Westwood Capital, and Jason Barrett, the Managing Director of Paladin Strategic Partners. All right, Jason, we were talking a little bit during the break about perhaps some of the innovative ways that you're going to be able to structure these deals so that the banks, and we were just talking about the FDIC every Friday coming out with the list of banks that they uh, shut down. How's this going to help the banks? It's going to help the banks rid themselves of toxic assets. I, I, th I think that's very important. Uh, I think also if you look at uh, where bank stocks are trading, they're at you know all-time low multiples. If you can get yourself, uh, if you get rid of yourself of toxic assets, ultimately you'll then trade back to, to historical levels. So we're actually doing the bank a favor by taking these assets assets off of their balance sheet. Uh, I think what's what's important though is is we're really taking a leadership role, and we would like other asset managers to follow us because. Again, this is a public problem. Keeping someone's home, keeping, protecting someone's home is very, very important. And if anything we get, uh, I'd, li I'd like the, the message to be that we're doing well by doing good, by keeping people who want to continue to pay their mortgages, however, are upside down. I mean, th th there's a, t a statistic that says 32% of Americans are underwater now. There's no equity in their homes. So you're basically a glorified renter. So we're looking to, uh, to, to, to try and you know, provide some, some type of solution to the housing crisis. All right, but having said that, let me put it to you, what about the 68% of people who are in their homes, who are paying their mortgages, who say, you know what, this sounds like a pass, and that's not good, because maybe I want to buy a home at a foreclosure price, and this is going to take those off the market. Yeah, that's, that's a very good point. Uh, next year, of course, uh, CoreLogic believes that 45% of American uh, homes with mortgages. Well, it always goes we'll to this year of people right? who live in glass so houses right. shouldn't throw stones, so, so maybe you're going to end up being in that same boat, so you got to be careful. Exactly, but, but uh, th there is clear moral hazard uh, handing out uh, principal discounts. I mean, banks are supposed to hand out toasters, not principal discounts. And uh, That dates uh, you, yeah, Daniel Alpert. There I'm just you go. You banks know. haven't right. handed out toasters for in a long, long time. For a long time, right. gas stations don't hand out knives. Yeah, I'm that's true, for good reason now. Um, but having said that, uh, you know, eventually the principal has to be written down on these mortgages. Clearly, simply reducing the interest rates and tacking on the arrearage to the back of the mortgage is not going to work long term. And the only way to solve this problem is to encourage encourage people to start paying on new schedules and when they show that they are credit worthy and they are able to pay refinance them into new loans at significant principal discount. So no, so no one's really going to get a, yeah, a completely yeah, yeah. free pass. I mean, we're talking about people that need all this. All right, I want to thank you gentlemen very much. Pleasure. Thank you, uh, Daniel Alpert coming in from Westwood Capital and Jason Barrett from Paladin. Appreciate your, your insights. Thank you very much. Great.